What is anomyosis? Let's talk about this uterus condition. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. And today I wanna to talk to you about a condition you may or may not have heard about called adenomyosis. This condition can impact your fertility, it can impact your life, your quality of life, and yet it's something that so many people have not even heard about. But first, I'm a fertility doctor, so I love to share fertility-related facts and information for you to learn about your body. I would love it if you would subscribe and follow along this channel so that we can share this message with more people. So what is adenomyosis? Let's dive in. Adenomyosis is a condition where you have endometrial-like tissue, the glands in the stroma of the endometrium, inside the muscular component of the uterus. So the uterus actually has multiple layers. So if we think about the uterus, the inside layer is called the endometrium, the middle layer is the myometrium, and the outer layer is the serosa. Now the serosa is very smooth and shiny. It's what prevents anything from sticking to the outside of the uterus. The myometrium, the muscle part of the uterus, is the bulk of the uterus. That is most of the uterine wall. That is what causes contractions when you go into labor. That's what allows the uterus to expand when you get pregnant. And that's what causes cramps when you have your period. And the inner layer is the endometrium. The endometrium actually has cells that can regenerate, like stem cells, but then also has this ability to grow in response to estrogen, compact in response to progesterone, and prepare itself for implantation. The endometrium is what you shed when you have a period, so it regenerates every month. You are not supposed to have those endometrial glands and stroma anywhere except in the endometrium. When you have them in other places, that is a disease state. So just to understand, endometriosis is when you have those endometrial glands and stroma outside the uterus, so what we call the peritoneal cavity. This can be implanting on the outside of the uterus, behind the uterus, on the ovaries or the tubes, the intestines, anywhere outside. Endometriosis is extremely painful. The prevalence is one out of 10 that we know of. It is difficult to diagnose because it's a surgical diagnosis only, and it definitely can impact the quality of life and your ability to get pregnant. But adenomyosis is not talked about as much, and it is when you have those endometrial glands and stroma inside the myometrium or the muscular part of your uterus. Importantly, just because you have one does not mean you have the other, and I think that's important to understand, but both diseases have a common characteristic that the body has an abnormal response to these normal cells. So the body interprets that these cells are in the wrong spot and you have an inflammatory autoimmune reaction to them. How common is adenomyosis? Well, that's hard to tell. If you do hysterectomies and you go look at the hysterectomy sample, like the pathology, you cut open the uterus, you will find that up to 20 to 30% of hysterectomy samples will have adenomyosis. That said, there's often a reason why people got to hysterectomy and it may have been undiagnosed adeno. Maybe they had pain or heavy bleeding and some of the adenomyosis symptoms but never got diagnosed. So the true answer is that across everybody we don't know but it does appear to be pretty common. When that endometrial glands and stroma invades that myometrial layer, it causes the uterus to become bigger and bulkier. It can cause you to bleed more with your periods and you can have symptoms such as that. So what we call you know, dysmenorrhea, painful menses, you can have menorrhagia, heavy bleeding, you can have irregular cycles sometimes, pelvic pain, pain with intercourse, infertility, and an enlarged bulky uterus or bloating on exam. We don't exactly know what causes it, although we do know some things that make it more common. So if you have it any uterine surgery in the past, then you've created a pathway where that endometrium can get into that myometrial layer. And if you're older, so if you're over age 40, and that may just be those people have had a higher chance of having uterine surgery or they've had more periods and more opportunity for invasion. However, two to 5% of all adolescents, people who've not had any uterine surgery, have been found to have adenomyosis. So there's definitely also a genetic or an environmental predisposition that causes people to have this. But in general, you're going to see it more often in people who are older, over age 40, given birth, had the uterus instrumented or uterine surgery, and there is a cross with endometriosis. How do you 
diagnose it or do you know if you have it? Well, that is really hard. You first have to acknowledge that your periods are either heavier or more painful than normal. Even though sometimes you can have irregular bleeding, that's not a classic symptom. So we're talking about regular, painful, heavy periods. You then have to have somebody do an exam. So sometimes on bimanual exam where you feel the uterus, you can actually tell that it feels different, like foggy, soft and big, kind of squishier than a uterus should normally feel. I know it's crazy. You also can see it sometimes on ultrasound. You can see invasion of the endometrial tissue or abnormal vascularity in that myometrial layer. But MRI is actually one of the best ways. So unlike endometriosis, which we only utilize surgery as the diagnostic method for most cases, you can sometimes see it on ultrasound, imaging actually is much better to detect adenomyosis. So exam may get it, like so pelvic exam may help you diagnose it, but transvaginal ultrasound, and if you're suspicious, you might proceed with an MRI. Officially, you're gonna get the diagnosis if you take the uterus out of your body, but ultimately, if you want to be pregnant, you're not going to do that. So how do you treat it? It kind of depends on what spectrum you're at. So certainly, it's an inflammatory process. So anti-inflammatories like NSAIDs, ibuprofen, Motrin, et cetera. You can also do hormonal contraception to try to decrease the amount of endometrial tissue. If you use birth control pills and you have constant progesterone so that endometrial tissue is not getting stimulated to grow, so that can be helpful. You can use medications like transexamic acid, TXA, which stops bleeding sooner. So if you have heavy bleeding, that can be helpful. But ultimately, some people might need surgery, like an adenomyomectomy or a hysterectomy. The caution here for both of those is that the risk can be really high. Taking out adenomyosis, it's not typically a discrete mass like a fibroid is, where it's easier to go take out a fibroid because it's a discrete mass of the same tissue type as the muscle of the uterus in the uterus. So instead of having the muscle be like this, a fibroid is a little ball of that myometrial tissue. It's actually well circumscribed and easier to take out. When we have adenomyosis, it can be very irregular. And I have seen people go to surgery and just have terrible results of their uterus not functioning or healing afterwards. So you can have scar tissue or you can have just such little residual myometrial tissue left that you're not able to carry a baby. Definitely the lifestyle impacts of having heavy and painful periods cannot be ignored. But if we look at one of the most severe consequences, it's going to be infertility. And so if we think you might have adenomyosis and you have infertility, we have to look at how do we treat this, especially if we're not willing to go cut out a chunk of your uterus. This is typically going to be with IVF. And the reason why is that with IVF, we can give patients a medication called Lupron. And when we give you Lupron, what we're able to do is decrease inflammation and decrease the activity of this endometrial-like tissue. Lupron is what we call a GnRH agonist, but essentially when you use it, the brain stops sending out hormones of FSH and LH, therefore you're not having any tissue that's hormonally reactive respond. So you can do an embryo transfer in the setting of Lupron, pre-treatment or constant treatment with Lupron, and that appears to be the best option for adenomyosis. So if you're trying to get pregnant and I think or suspect you have adeno based on exam or imaging, I'm gonna to talk to you about should we do IVF because is this going to impact implantation? And can I overcome that not by risking your uterus, but by decreasing the activity of that tissue and then being able to put an embryo inside? You can't decrease the activity and ovulate naturally. Those two things are in conflict. Can you do treatment to try to feel better if you're not getting pregnant? That's besides birth control or other things. Sometimes aromatase inhibitors like letrozole, sometimes daily progesterone, sometimes long acting Lupron can help. But if you're wanting to get pregnant and you have adeno, just like endometriosis, a lot of those patients are going to need IVF. And if that is you, we need to think about how do we help your uterus function the absolute best. And in studies, we have seen that if we pre-treat patients with adenomyosis with Lupron prior to embryo transfer, they do better than if they're not taking Lupron. So that's a good point for something you can advocate for yourself if your clinic is not doing Lupron-based transfers, but you have endo or adeno, that might be something you need. The short answer is like most things in women's reproductive health, we need better and more studies to really get to the answer here. It does appear Lupron pretreatment, getting to IVF faster is going to be helpful for the vast majority of people with adenomyosis. Living an anti-inflammatory lifestyle may also be beneficial just in general and trying to help you feel better. 
If you are not getting pregnant, then trying to talk about other options will be beneficial. If you're not getting pregnant, then talking about options to make your lifestyle better is also equally important. Even when you get pregnant, the risks are not gone. If you've had surgery for adeno, you do carry a risk of uterine rupture or preterm birth, but even without surgery, we still do see growth restriction, preterm birth, and placental abnormalities, and that makes sense because we're asking that placenta to grow into that uterine wall. And we also see a higher rate of miscarriage with adenomyosis. So ultimately, if you have some of these symptoms, it is worth getting checked out, and if you have these symptoms and you're trying to get pregnant and have infertility, please don't waste time. Go see your fertility doctor. Feel free to ask questions so that we can answer them below. As always, I appreciate you. Subscribe to the channel and you can follow along on Natalie Crawford MD on Instagram and listen to the As a Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.